Secrets. We all have them. And even though we know they're not good for us to harbor, we allow their power to imprison us in lies anyway. We hear accusations in our head that if people knew about that, well, they despise us, hate us, and worst of all, reject us. Secrets are kept often because of a fear that coming clean about our issues will so devastate the people around us that they won't want us anymore. But the reality is that the longer we wear the mask, the more damage we do to ourselves, regardless of those around us. The power of a thought, believing you're condemned, has caused many to give up on life altogether. Ask our guests, the White Collar Sideshow. Friend, you got yourself a backstage pass. Welcome to Backstage Pass, I'm Clinton Fopple. Masks, we all wear them, some more than others. Our friends from White Collar Sideshow want to help you and I take them off. I'm T.D. Benton from the Traveling White Collar Sideshow. This is the Faceless Woman, the Leech, the Pig, and this is what we do. The masks in our performance represent, for instance, Veronica, the faceless woman, how sex sells everything, how men look at women from the neck down, and really just a lot of lust, you know, not just hardcore pornography, but really what are we using to please ourselves in a sense. The gas mask represents kind of warfare, um, almost like Am I gonna give in when I'm being tempted with looking at online porn with my friends? Am I gonna give in to what they do and what they're doing? And it's that battle in your mind. Am I gonna not do it this time? Am I gonna give in? And it really becomes a focus on our life and, and the, gas mask, the gas mask is that battle, that warfare. And the pig <laughs> is not men or pigs. <laughs> the pig is kind of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the guy that you never wanna be but you always become him. Sometimes it's behind closed doors, sometimes it's front of it, in front of everybody else. But most importantly, it's the guy that we need to get rid of in order to become transparent and true and real in front of everybody else. What is the big deal about being real? Well, it's freeing. Think about it. Only you know the real you. We only know what you show us. But if you open up, if you talk about the struggles, about the secrets, about the sin, then we get to see the issues society is being smothered by. A lot of what I'm seeing in today's society is struggling with pornography, uh, drug addiction, suicide, cutting, depression. Um, not a lot of human contact anymore. Just living in a bedroom, MySpace, Twitter, Facebook, text messaging, cell phones, and things that consume our lives. And um, I think we have to recognize how that's consuming our life and really take the focus off of that and use them as tools to actually reach people as opposed to closing ourselves in, so to say. What we're trying to show through our performance is really a challenge to the audience to be open and honest with what you struggle with in your life, whether it's suicide, cutting, depression, pornography, drug addiction, drinking, gambling, or whether it's texting 5,000 times a day, MySpace, Twitter, 24 hour a day, video games, what is it that's consuming our lives? And the answer being focusing on Christ. Taking what your focus is and what consumes your, your whole mind and your thoughts and using Christ as the solution to not get rid of those things, but to be able to use those things as tools to reach other people and help people realize they're not alone when they're struggling with the same thing. It's being honest, it's using integrity, it's making smart decisions, 
recognizing when you're being tempted with something and severing it right then and there. And it's being passionate about what you're struggling with and using it for a purpose for God. And it is simply just to help other people realize they're not alone. Now remember what we talked about at the beginning of the show. The enemy of God will tell you lies. He will tell you that if you share your secrets and confess your poor choices, that everyone will leave you. But that's just like the enemy. Lucy, as we like to call him here at Remedy, turns the truth around. The truth is that you're alone while in the secret. You condemn yourself. The secret feels like a 5,000 ton weight on your back, crushing the life out of you. And somehow Lucy convinces you that confession and repentance is worse than that. It's a lie. When you come clean, you're able to share your shortcomings with others who also have secrets. And like a game of dominoes, your obedience to share and confess causes others to have the courage to also open up and confess too. Lucy is a liar. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. I know that this episode of Backstage Pass is going to call out in many the need to open up about their secrets. And some are going to hear the message playing in their mind that there's no hope. That if you share this thing, this secret, God will reject you. For example, you might be a cutter and believe that you need to self-harm to survive. This is what T had to say about that. I say that God loves you more than anything you could ever want, more than anything that you hate in your life, more than the anger and depression that you're feeling. And he wants to spin this around and use the same thing that you struggle with as a teaching tool for somebody else to help other cutters out there, to help other people realize that you love them so they can know that we're all in this together. Because really, we're all in the same boat. Everybody's struggling with something. And if you can just be honest and share it and get it off your system, God, Satan's got nothing on you. And you can become a walking ministry with exactly what you struggle with and challenge people's thinking and learn how to inspire people to go further than cutting and learn how to pour into other people and hold each other accountable for our actions and then forgive each other and pick each other up and take your cutting that you struggle with and use it as the tool to change people's lives. I really believe that the secret to really being free is getting what you struggle with out in the open. Being honest with somebody, letting somebody know that you're struggling, that you're hurting, that you need something and really letting that person build into your life with love and accountability to really find someone that loves you and trust that you can trust and go, man, please help me every day. Because really, that's, that is what it is. We need to be unified that way. And that's what makes up a solid body. And there is an answer through love, through humanity. But it's also letting Jesus take what you struggle with, with that secret, and hold other people accountable as well. And be able to share and help that person that is struggling with the same thing you've been struggling with to go, wow, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one either. And it's pouring into them the same way an accountability partner would pour into you. So getting it when you get it off your chest and out of your mind, you don't have it in there anymore. And you can start focusing on Christ more and more and letting Him take over what you're struggling with. A secret can go from a condemner to a reminder that we need to open up and be honest with one another. Oh sure, we can't share every details of our lives because, well, then we sound needy for attention. But when it comes to the blockages in our life to live in fullness, those secrets can be exposed and build bridges of accountability with others who also have to come clean of their condemnation. 
Now, how are we tracking with this show? Do you need someone to talk to tonight? How about jump into the private convo with one of our soul medics at chatlessandlove.com. You can remain anonymous while we help you expose this secret in God's time. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. Some of you have been watching this backstage pass and you're weary of all this talk about confession and being open about your secrets. Somewhere in your past, you perhaps trusted someone and they threw it back in your face. Like some Christian leaders, you might wonder why White Collar Sideshow doesn't preach a message of judgment. God has not called us to do it that way. God has really challenged our lives to do something very strange and unusual, something that's against the grain, out of the box, and really challenged our personal lives to go further with what life really is, to become a living, breathing example of what Christ calls us to do. Sell all your belongings, give it to the poor, pick up your cross, follow him, and go therefore and make disciples. And the days of talking about it are really over. It's time to take action. And how better to share how real God is in the world when you can just do it by simply explaining your life. I love the way T put it. The days of talking about it are really over. You can hang on to your past and it will continue to suck the life out of you. Or you can move forward in the promises of God's forgiveness and start living life to the full, motivated by the fact that even though you didn't deserve it, Christ died for you. I remember when I was in the hospital after my seven lung surgeries and then getting out of the hospital and being so addicted to prescription painkillers from all my surgeries and going, man, how do I live like this? And I remember the doctor telling me, I'm not giving you any more prescription painkillers. I don't want to contribute to your death. And then going into this deep, dark depression, going into um, a very suicidal moment, and then finding someone who is a Christian and said, hey, listen, dude, would you pray for me? Because I don't have anywhere else to go. And I think that's how we feel when we're struggling with something like that is, I don't have any place to go. Nobody understands who I am. But everything we struggle with is that way. That's how our minds work. And this gentleman said, hey, have you ever tried Jesus in your life? And I kind of laughed and said, are you an idiot, dude? You don't see Jesus. You don't see God. How do you know they're real? How do you know he would come and help me? I kind of walked off after that. I came back a couple of days later. I said, look, I don't know how to live. I'll do anything. And he prayed this prayer with me that I never expected to work in my life. But instantly, when it was over, I felt a new passion and a new purpose because I felt free. Like everything I'd ever done was forgotten. Every mistake I've ever made was finished. And I had a new passion and purpose with your life, with my life. And what this gentleman told me is exactly what's happened to my life. And it's exactly what I want to say. That God gives us a clean slate, a fresh start, a new beginning, and everything that you struggle with, every mistake you've ever made, everything you think is wrong with you, every emotion that haunts your mind, he wants to use for a purpose in your life. He wants to take you and make you a walking tool for Him, focusing on Christ and pouring into people as you would have wanted people to pour into you through the struggles and just loving on people and helping others realize they're not alone when they struggle as well. You're not alone. And you won't be alone after you share your secrets. Jesus Christ didn't rise from the dead to pay for a ticket to heaven. He died to pave a road of salvation for you to live in his presence for the rest of eternity. That's a promise. 
I want to thank the Traveling White Collar Sideshow for being a living example of grace, redemption, humility, and boldness. Check out more about these incredible people at whitecollarsideshow.com. And I want to thank you, first for watching, but secondly for what you're about to do in exposing the secrets that shackle you to sin. Remember, we're Remedy. We chat and we listen and we love. Visit us online right now. That's it, my friend. You've just had a backstage pass.